Video games have been under attack since they became extremely popular, and unfortunately, that's not going to die down anytime soon. There is constantly going to be someone spewing a narrative about how unhealthy they are for younger individuals or how they believe video games could cause real-world violence, even if it's unproven, but now we've caught the Yakuza franchise producer echoing these sentiments, talking about how he's worried about violence in video games. I have a few things to show off, but before we get into the topic, if you enjoy the content I create, check out the links in the description, follow me on social media, and consider supporting through Patreon or via YouTube membership. So I wanted to start with this Bounding Into Comics article, and it's what I'm going to be primarily referencing. It says, in doing his best impression of a reactionary 90s-era American politician, the longtime series producer Masayoshi Yokoyama has admitted that though he has no explicit proof of the fact, he believes violent video game content is detrimental to the mental capabilities of players across the board. Now, of course, he is allowed to have his own opinion. If he wants to sit here and say, I think that this could be the case, that would be one thing, but he is not. He is saying that as a company, the Sega has now altered their approach to video games and also how he has altered his approach to this franchise because of this false belief. It's not just him having an opinion because he is representing a company and a massive franchise. It says whose tenure with the franchise has seen him serve as a writer and producer on every entry save Dead Souls and Project K's duology, shared his thoughts on the topic of video game violence while speaking with the Japan Times regarding the difference in developmental philosophies uh, between the Yakuza and GTA video game series. Beginning with a direct comparison, he recalled the outlet's uh, mass the Cena that when it came to Yakuza's design philosophy, from the start we decided not to have a game where you could hit people yourself, all fights start with a provocation from the opponent, and the hero never hits women, that is an absolute rule. Now, of course, this has been clearly a rule since the very beginning of the franchise, so I am not going to sit here and say that this is some kind of form of self-censorship, this is a visual direction that they decided to go in, and obviously this franchise is massively popular. Maybe this is something that, honestly, a lot of people have never realized throughout their times playing the game, but it was a creative decision made at the very beginning of the franchise. But the problem is that they're almost saying that it's negative and that Grand Theft Auto is bad because you can hit women and, you know, you can start fights yourself. I don't really think that this is a good way to to market your game or your franchise, at least in my opinion, while Yakuza and Grand Theft Auto have a lot of similarities, they are vastly different, and I don't even really think that they should be directly compared. But he said, our approach is the opposite. It's a completely different game. And yes, this is what I, I, I definitely think. But in further detailing the differences between the two open world series, the producer then explained, from the beginning, we targeted a purely Japanese audience who actually goes there and wanted them to say, ah, yes, that's really how it is. GTA offers a very large map where you can act freely. But in Like a Dragon, you operate in a tight and dense space where you enjoy a story. But of course, Course, this is where they go into the conversation of the topic of violence in video games, noting that his concern over such content stemmed from those moments when you see mass shootings on TV and you learn that the author was playing at home. It's a very complex problem, but I think we can't say that video games don't have an influence because unlike a novel or a film, they allow you to have an immersive experience. So I think when creating video games that contain violence or these stories, it is imperative to think about the effects that this can have on players, which of course is just so absurd because this has been a narrative that has been around for decades and is unproven. Here are just a few images uh, of headlines uh, from several sources that have done tons of studies over the years. Playing video games doesn't lead to violent behavior study shows. Violent video games found not to be associated with 
adolescent aggression. Just a Game study shows no evidence that violent video games lead to real-life violence. Uh, this was consistent with others' findings. As the Supreme Court noted, any packs impacts due to video games are nearly impossible to distinguish, and he claims that there is consistent evidence that violent video games encourage aggression are simply false. Then we have blame game. Violent video games do not cause violence. I mean, this has been a discussion that has been, you know, circulating for, for decades at this point, and no matter how much evidence you prove against these individuals' narratives, they constantly push it because, of course, they push this narrative uh, by using outdated studies that show games do contribute to violent behaviors, and they will not listen to any information, even if more recent and correct, that goes against what they're saying. These people, uh, you know, do not care about hearing updated information. They simply care about hearing the information that they want to push. That won't come as a surprise to many of you, but of course, these individuals do not want to listen to the truth. And of course, these screenshots I've shared on social media are only from studies done in the past few years, but this conversation is decades old. This push really began in the early 2000s when some scholars, anti-media advocates, and groups like the APA began working to connect an often contradictory set of results to public health concerns about violence in media. This, of course, echoed historical patterns patterns of moral panic, such as the 1950s concerns about comic books and Tipper Gore's uh, efforts to blame pop and rock music in the 80s for violence, sex, and Satanism. Of course, in the 80s, we also had satanic panic because of Dungeons and Dragons, so the cycle never ends and it hasn't even today. But no matter how much the cycle continues over the years, confidence among scholars that violent video games influence aggression or violence in the real world has definitely crumbled but of course, there are just some individuals out there who want to look at video games and say that they are bad, that they are negative, even when we have plenty of evidence against those narratives. We could go all the way back to 1992 when the United States government began their hearings into the claims of video game violence corrupting society, and the two games at the time that kicked off those hearings were Mortal Kombat and Night Trap, which in the wake of those hearings, the ESRB was formed to create a system that they could use to fight back against the ridiculous claims politicians were making that video games could cause real violence. And it's just so sad to see someone as influential as this franchise producer come out and spout all of this nonsense when he's clearly got no proof of it, but he is speaking as some kind of authority on the matter. And of course, there are going to be, let's just be honest, normies out there who go, wow, this video game franchise producer says this is the truth? Well, clearly, when he works with a company like Sega, they have information that we don't and even though, of course, they don't, um, this is a narrative that now is going to be spread around the internet and there are going to be people going, yep, if he says it, I am going to believe him because he is in the industry. And of course, to make it even worse, he actually admitted that plots in the series have gradually moved away from purely Yakuza themes to focus on social issues and the story no longer only concerns the underworld. Nobody wants a game like this that focuses on social issues. That's just not what people want. So not only does he not understand, you know, information that he is spewing in interviews that are going to get millions of views, but he's also straight up admitting that they have, you know, moved away from creating content that people want to content that you know, fills a quota that, of course, ticks all of these boxes that they can get those sweet, sweet ESG dollars. Of course, Sega over the past few years has been extremely focused on ESG, but it's just sad to see this happen. Like, this is just a massive pile of problems within this one single interview. And it is sad, again, that we have this franchise producer coming out talking about violence in video games when he clearly has no evidence, no data to back up his claims at all whatsoever. And now there are going to be many people online who are going to spout this nonsense and say, well, he is in the industry, he works for a massive company, so clearly he knows what he's talking about when clearly he doesn't.
But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this and, of course, found it important and informative, make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the channel. And, of course, if you didn't, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.